Well, welcome back to the Beyond Sundays podcast. We're so thankful that you're joining us uh, for our latest episode. And this whole entire month of September, we are looking at 15 years of Church at the Grove, which is kind of crazy to think about that it's been 15 years since uh, the Lord started Church at the Grove and uh, what a journey it has been, right? It has been a journey. Yeah, it's been something, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How many days have you wanted to quit? That's the biggest question. Every Monday. <laughs> Every Monday. <laughs> just And that's just your... I mean, how many times have you wanted to quit? Uh, Sunday and Monday. And Sunday and Monday. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. And so we thought it would be good since there's so many new uh, people around Church of the Grove. I mean, like there's very few faces that were here at the very beginning um, that are still here today. We thought it'd be good to kind of just take a few moments and just kind of talk through the history of Church at the Grove and just kind of spend some time just talking about just some of the big celebrations, some of the big events that have happened in the life of Church at the Grove over the last 15 years. And it's really exciting that we get to bring in Jill, which is Russ's wife, yes. and uh, and get to kind of hear a different perspective. She can kind of share some of the dirty uh, secrets behind the scenes moments uh, yes. that Russ maybe kind of will gloss over. I'm scared to death. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and just kind of share a little bit about the history of Church of the Grove. But before we do that, since there's some people that maybe are listening or watching today that maybe don't know Jill or maybe don't even know Russ and y'all's story a little bit, why don't y'all just give a little bit of background about you guys, how y'all met, Jill, a little bit about your story just in general. Well, I, I share this a lot when I'm preaching that I did not grow up in church. I grew up uh, here in the metro Atlanta area and, and my mother was a believer. Uh, my dad was not. Uh, I had a grandmother that was a godly, uh, sweet Christian lady, and she took me to church when I would stay with her on the weekends. And so I, get, I did get to hear the gospel. I watched it modeled in her life. And, and so I came to Christ really at 18, um, you know, through really the influence of my two brothers and, and some other people. And so Jill, on the other hand, she grew up, man, going to church from day one. Before I always say she, she was tithing and, and going to church before she was ever born and, uh, and so in South Georgia. And so we, uh, we met uh, at a youth camp called Impact. And so before I was in ministry, I was in, in, in business, and I went to youth camp with my brother Butch, who was a youth pastor at the time. And it was a camp called Impact. Uh, we met on the campus of West Georgia, uh, but most of the impact yearly was held at uh, up in Tacoa, Georgia. And mm -hmm. so we really started developing friendship in those early few years uh, and just really knew each other kind of um, as acquaintances and, um, and then met through some other circumstances when, when Jill came down to Savannah where I lived. Um, but tell, how about your family? Okay, so I grew up in Soperton, Georgia. It's a little Mayberry town. And... My mom was a very godly woman and always taught me Jesus from day one. And my dad was a Christian, but he had had a bad experience uh, through the church he grew up in. So he was would always say, I'm okay with God, but I don't, I don't like church or don't want to go to church, yeah. don't trust church people. So he was not opposed to us going, but he would typically come and watch, you know, the programs at the end of vacation Bible school and that type thing until we were in high school. And then God got a hold of his heart because we almost lost our farm. Um, we almost foreclosed, and he really had to seek the Lord and see what was important. And um, God began to just provide over and over and over through our church family, and my dad's heart was softened to go back, and then he became very involved um, in the our local church there in Soperton. And like he said, I was, I was taught and— to whom much is given, much is required. So I am thankful, and I'm glad to serve because of that. And then the funny part that some people know, I was not ever going to get married. Um, I was going to go be a missionary in another co country. And um, when I met Russ, he was um, not headed in that direction, and I was. But I had prayed. Somebody had told me, you need to pray and be willing to do whatever God calls you to. So I said, okay, fine, Lord, on the way to impact that. I said, I just pray that if you want me to get married, let me just meet the man I'm, you know, working side by side. And our schools were side by side, and we saw each other each day. So we began to talk, and then later on, um, obviously, he started calling me and and then talked to my parents. and The rest is history, right? But yeah, and so when I, when I met Jill, uh, I mean, she already had a reputation with all these people from camp and these friendships, and... And so when we started dating and got engaged, the, the, I think the summer 
uh, prior to our wedding, uh, people said, "Man, Russ is marrying Lottie Moon." <laughs> <laughs> and, so, and if you don't, if people don't know who that is. They it's don't. a famous uh, Southern Baptist missionary, and so she went uh, to China yeah, and spent her life there. And she, yeah. you know, she she's just known for her, you know, passion for mission work, and she, you know, she wasn't going to get married and, and be uh, slowed down, you know, and and so they all they all thought that Jill's going to go to the mission field and. And Russ is marrying Lottie Moon, and so a lot of people think I'm very spiritual because I married Jill. <laughs> but I, the, so maybe the, the bigger I question like, is, how did you fool Jill into <laughs> believing, or what did what did you do? How, how did you pray that into existence? Yeah, get them, <laughs> get get to the altar. Yeah, get the vow said. <laughs> and so, uh, well, we all know that re- the reality. We we counsel young couples like you don't really know each other until you get married anyway. Yeah. yeah. And so, but one thing we both wanted to do, because I did pray, I said, I don't want anybody to slow me down as far as reaching out to people and missions. And boy, have that, that, that prayer has been answered because sure. we have been going full throttle <laughs> since engagement. We literally got married between two camps, mm-hmm. two youth camps. And, um, I, Hey, planning a church is missions. And it, it both took us a while to realize that in the fullness of what it really means. Yeah. So you serve wherever you are, you bloom where you're planted, no matter which country it's in and and what God calls you to do. Absolutely. And y- y'all are definitely the living epitome of that. And w- most people might not know, but you guys got married a little bit later on in life than maybe what's normal for at least y'all's generation. Um, right. We were old. 30, <laughs> 30. We, we were 30 and 31. Yep. And then y'all struggled to have kids, right, for at least the first part? Your marriage? Right, I have an autoimmune disease, and they told me I could not have children. I told him that ahead of time. We're like, we're just going to adopt, and um, so we had every time we planned to adopt, a miracle would occur. So we planned to adopt three times, and we have Josiah, Abigail, and Caleb. Yep, and they're how old now? They are twenty three, twenty sixteen. Now, now, mm-hmm. and so they they were there, and so y'all. W- g- g- Catching up on like where y'all were ministry wise. So y'all got married at thirty years old, and then y'all you were still doing business at that point, or were you then in ministry right well, after that. When I when we started dating, I was in sales with a company. I was wrestling with the call to ministry, and I, I mean, I we had some very you know pointed conversations while we were dating. Uh, I mean, Jill, I think uh, was a great sounding board and. Uh, we'd have uh, one time I asked her, I said, do you feel like you could ever see yourself married, you know, to somebody in ministry? And her answer was, as long as you love God and you're walking with Jesus, it doesn't matter what you do to make a living. Yeah. And so, uh, and so if she said, if you're called, you've got to obey. And so I surrendered to the call and re- it was very quick that I began to have some conversations that led to me, uh, going on staff at a church called Concord Baptist up in Claremont, Georgia, which is. Uh, just below Cleveland, Georgia, and which I had been here a year in Walton County to help Butch and Terry at Summit Baptist. Which was your brother and sister-in-law. Yeah, so I was in business work and living up here and just volunteering with them and doing student ministry and, and helping with whatever was needed in the church. Mm-hmm. And I was thinking I would go ahead and go to seminary and then probably go into ministry, but I got a phone call. Uh, from a church and somebody, uh, one of the youth ministry guys in the state of Georgia had recommended me to the church. And, and it was a small country church at that time. And it it's was a great place. Now. Yeah. It was a great place to learn ministry in, in a, in a growing church. And it was a, a good experience. First step. Then we both, we, so we, we, I started in January of 95 as on staff there, we got married in June of 95. So I had been at, on staff at that church for six months and we got married yeah. in between two youth camps and then, <laughs> and, it, and it's, it hasn't slowed down since. Sure. And, and yeah. I wanted to add, we were both youth volunteers. I was in public school. He was in sales. That's how we even met at Impact because we were volunteers taking our youth um, group up to that camp. So we had already... When, when we talked about getting married, we he kept saying, well, we've already, we're have already we already in ministry anyway. I said, yeah, but you're not it. Um, and the other funny part is when he said, can you see yourself married to a pastor? I said, 
no, but I'll pray for you a wife. <laughs> <laughs> so he kept yeah, persisting. I forgot saying, that. I think you're it. <laughs> <laughs> and so you were you were teaching or you were a counselor? I, I had already taught three years, and I was in a, a counselor at elementary school at the time. Gotcha. And so when he went on staff at Concord, did you continue to do that? Uh, I finished up that year. And then we married, I moved up there, and then continued to do counseling in the public schools there okay. until our first was born. Okay. And that was how long were y'all at Concord before Josiah was born? Let's see, I started in, uh, we got married in June 95, so, and Josiah was born in January of 98. So okay. three years. Three years. And then y'all were at Concord for how long? Four uh, years. Four a years. Over four, a little over four and years. And then y'all left to go where? Well, we went briefly to Tennessee. We served at a church briefly in Nashville, um, uh, yeah. which was a it was a positive experience. But uh, one of my one of our yeah one of our best friends in you know in life and ministry uh, called and said, "Would you ever consider, you know, uh, coming back to the Atlanta area?" And that led to a series of conversations uh, where I would end up coming back to North Star and being a youth pastor at North Star, which was a church plant in Cobb County. Yep. And North Star really became the kind of the foundation really of Church at the Grove. I mean, like that really became the framework for Church at the Grove in the future. Yeah, I would say so. I didn't even understand. I didn't know what church planning was. I mean, if somebody had said, you know, something about church planning or church planter, I would have needed explanation. I always joke that I thought churches started when people got mad yeah. and, and left. I mean, but that's I, the only stories that I had heard of. But I had been, been involved in a church plant in Peachtree City where I was working. Okay. And I loved it when they came and told me what they were doing and wh- how they wanted to grow. Um, and I can't remember. The, they changed the names. But It was Braylon. But now it's... And now it's Dogwood, Dogwood Church. Yeah. Keith... Um, Pastor Keith, I can't try to think of his last name. Man, they they were very gracious to to Jill and to us, and it was it was I th- I forgot about that. That was a very uh, influential church experience for Jill, um, and then I had never understood church planning. And North Star was very intentional, very purposeful, very strategic. Uh, we want to reach people that are unreached or mm-hmm. dechurched, and so everything had a reason behind it and how they did church. Yeah. And so you guys, you served as student pastor there um, for how long? Four and a, oh, almost four and a half, a little over four and a half years. Four and a half years, same position the whole time, right? Yeah, I did. I did. How I, I did uh, youth ministry, and um, a little bit of college, and then I did some college. Okay, you know, I had that under my responsibility. But again, we had done ten years as volunteers, gotten married, ten years on staff, and that was all youth ministry. So we. We came to Church at the Grove with 20 years in youth ministry. Mm-hmm. So you have to be flexible and you have to think outside the box. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. then y'all came back to Walton County um, f- and joined the staff at Summit. Right. And with the intention, was the intention when y'all moved back to Walton County to start a church at that point? Oh, well, yes. the conversation yeah. went like this. You know, when Bo- my brother Butch was in inviting me to consider, you know, coming over to Walton County, I told Butch, I said, I think I'm supposed to plant a church. He said, well, if that's the case, we'll help you. Yeah. But, but just come over here and help us do ministry. Uh, one of the things that he wanted to do was to start a Saturday night service, which was which creative and innovative, uh, and we did. Mm-hmm. And it, beca- it became really a, a place where uh, a lot of what was the launch team for Church at the Grove began to be a part of something that was birthed. So it was almost like the church, Church at the Grove had a trial run a little bit at, at Summit. Yeah, and so the, those Saturday Night Live services, that's what I remember mm-hmm. uh, they were called. And I guess that's really where, and I remember you came over a few times and spoke at a few events and that I, 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 mean, I, I was around, but that's really, I guess, where our paths kind of crossed for the first time because I was, a, I guess, a college student at that point um, at Summit. And I remember... Uh, leading the students on Saturday nights, uh, teaching a Sunday school or Saturday school class uh, on uh, uh, Saturday nights right. um, there at Summit. And so those were fun times, I mean, yeah. to, to look back on now. And a lot of those people, like you said, eventually became the launch team for going out and starting Church at the Grove. And so think back to those days. I mean, what were some of the, the sweet memories and kind of things that you think through when you think about those days of kind of starting out? 
I remember the launch team, we had we would meet in each other's homes and everybody being so encouraging and yeah, let's do this. And, you know, we had several opportunities about where we were gonna meet and something would fall through and they were like, That's okay, let's keep going and then we also went around and visited some other plants to try to take notes and they would go with us. So those were fun field trips together. Yeah. As well as they were just always so encouraging. And yeah. I know that you mentioned some have gone, but I'm still so thankful for those who that have stayed. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It, it was great. There were a lot of things happening simultaneously. You know, I was at North Star and, and began taking seminary classes at New Orleans, which has a campus in Atlanta. And while I was learning about church planting at North Star in, in a laboratory, uh, I had the chance to take a church planting class and, you know, one of the gurus or experts is Ed Stetzer, um, and, and so being able to sit under him in that classroom setting and to learn from him and then uh, to, to be able to be a part of a new church plant here with Church of the Grove and, and take that group of people. Uh, what, we, what I had desired to do is, is during that launch phase, which was several months, six or eight months prior to the first time we ever had a Sunday gathering, I told the group, I said, I want to, de- I want us to deconstruct together mm-hmm. what church is. Let's deconstruct. Let's don't, let's don't rely on anything uh, related to our personal experiences here in American culture, and let's, and then let's look at Scripture in the Book of Acts, and let's reconstruct a biblical perspective about church. Yeah. And so, uh, and so that was that was a fun, uh, interesting, sometimes difficult process and 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 that man that process of deconstruction is a constant process Mm -hmm. because every time somebody walks through the doors if they are a believer coming from another church setting they have a perspective of church already in their mind of what it should be sure well so and i think the big question i mean that comes up is why i mean you know you think of especially you know walton county being a more rural community and there's a church on every corner. I mean, I know the words that you would always use would be, there's a steeple on every corner, or there's a steeple everywhere you look. And so why start another church? Like, what was the heartbeat behind starting another church in the greater metro Atlanta area? Well, I think there's, there's several reasons. I mean, just the, the biblical model of, of, of taking the gospel was the Apostle Paul going to an unreached area and, and then sharing the gospel, getting into conversations, a few people becoming followers, discipling them, and out of that, that relationship with those new believers, a new, church, a new church would be planted, or a new church would come out of that. I know Mike Breen, one of our guys that's mentored us, he says, you know, if you just plant churches, um, you, you, you may not get disciples, but if you make disciples, you always get mm-hmm. the church. And so... Uh, and so just looking for new areas where disciples need to be made. And so we see what, what I saw back then through my relationship with Ed Stetzer and, and, and other research is that there were uh, the population was in America and all over America, and especially in these city areas. And we can see Walton County is part of the metro Atlanta area. Yeah. The population is booming. Areas are growing. Uh, but the numbers of churches per capita is decreasing and so the church is always behind the eight ball of trying to catch up to to get the gospel to new people at the same time the church is losing influence in the Mm -hmm. in the culture Mm -hmm. and so you you just got this desperate need um to have a uh you know what i would consider gospel centered biblical uh expressions Mm -hmm. of the church um, to, to people who have never really had it. Mm-hmm. And it, even in the Bible Belt, the, the mis, misunderstanding is that everybody in the Bible Belt knows who Jesus is. No, a lot of people in the Bible Belt have experienced church, but they don't know who Jesus yeah. is. Mm-hmm. Or have a personal relationship right. with him, yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. And so I think back about those days at Summit being a part of that. Um, and, I mean, those were such just great, sweet days. And... I look back at people like your brother Butch and Terry and just the summit, I mean, just the summit church and just how gracious they were. I mean, like to think of, I mean, you know, in a a day and age where I feel like churches can be so competitive with one another 
And I mean, here's this church, which I mean, granted, there's a blood relationship here, but I mean, where they say, you know, pretty much recruit whoever you want to recruit and go out and we're going to give you money. We're going to give you people. We're going to give you resources. And you go and start a church two miles down the road and we're going to do whatever we can to help you. Like, yeah, it's, I mean, like that's just an incredible, it speaks volumes of Butch and just the Summit Church in general. And I think Butch's legacy is going to, you know, in the fruit for he, from his life and and Terry's life, their marriage and their family is going to be a, a legacy of generosity and, and, and the gospel, you know, I think. So not only were they gracious with us, I mean, they were, you know, they've started, uh, you know, ministries mm-hmm. and birthed things like CLC in Walton County yeah. and just giving away ministry. And then Butch left Summit to go be the church planner yeah. uh, strategist at the Georgia Baptist Convention. And so his whole life really has been given to church planning. Yeah. And it's just so cool to see, you know, I, I think of Jesus, if a, if a seed doesn't die, then it can't, you know, right. bear fruit. And I think their lives have definitely shown that to be true. Mm-hmm. And so we started Church of the Grove. Um, that was, uh, what, September 2006, right? right? And uh, started at uh, youth middle school. Youth right? middle school. And I can remember uh, the Saturday before that Sunday, you know, showing up and turning a cafetorium into a uh, auditorium for us to meet and setting up pipe and drape and putting out chairs and trying to figure out how to hook up a stereo speaker system and bands and all that kind of stuff. Um, what was that? I mean, what was that like for you guys? I mean, again, so when, the, when we first started, so that September, 2006, y'all had Caleb, Josiah and Abigail, they were all around. Uh, how old were they? Seven, four and one. Seven, four and one. Okay. Mm-hmm. So they're all, I mean, Caleb's entire life has been church at the Grove. Right. So as a young family, starting a brand new church, setting up, breaking down every Sunday. I mean, what was that like at youth middle school? Well, it was exciting and it was exhausting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so, how, how old were how, I'm not gonna ask Jill, but how old were you? <laughs> oh, man, 1995. Um, no, it was a 95. It was no, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's when we got married. I, man, it all flows together. 2006. 2006. So, uh, how old? How old was I? 41. Was that? Is that something? Yeah, something right around there. there. Right. Yeah. yeah. 41. So. Uh, exciting and exhausting. I, I, I look back. I wish I had been a young man, you know, when I planted uh, it, because it is a uh, number. Part of that is to, I wish I had extra time, you mm-hmm. know, to have uh, more more time of investing on the on the early end, uh, on the front end. Uh, so it was it was. I mean, exciting and exhausting. I think that it, the the energy was was thick and it, you know was just you know so. I mean, just seeing the Holy Spirit working mm-hmm. to see, I mean, one of the great stories, I, I think it was the first Sunday or the first few weeks at least that uh, we were having services. We had some preview services before we started having weekly services. And so one of those early services, uh, there was a couple in, that came, ended up becoming part of our church and the family came to Christ. And now, you know, God's, you know, worked in the life of their kids and, and uh, as Christ followers and, they were drive. They were. They had decided for the first time to go to church, and so they were driving down eighty one. Saw the sign in fr- in the front of youth middle school. They realized they were going to be late to the place that they were intending to go, and they literally just pulled in the parking lot because the sign was there, and yeah. they were some of the first people that we baptized. Yeah, and um, and so stories like that, just that God was at work, and yeah. so I, you know, I. You know, Jill can give you her perspective, but I'm, I think she would say exciting and exhausting as well. Yeah, both. And I remember um, pushing Caleb in the stroller and rolling a, a round table down as we would set up and mm-hmm. tear down. And then Josiah and Abigail were helping as well and running around and having fun. And like you said, energy and adrenaline was high back in those days. And even though Russ says that about wishing he was younger, I feel like he's always been cutting edge himself. Yeah, he, for sure. He reads all the time. And I, Kind of want to go back to, I can't remember the name of the book, but when you think like a missionary, is that the name of it? Live like a missionary. Live like a missionary. Yeah. You you study the, the culture where you're going into and try to minister to those people where they understand and you can meet them where they are. And so I feel like he's done a great job of, of doing that and mm-hmm. leading us to as well. Uh, and, and then 
our children. That's what we've tried to teach our children through the years. Okay, so this isn't just a church we're going to. It's just it's not just a game that you're going to play in. This is our mission field, which I'm yeah. kind of leading into. We we basically try. We were practicing family on mission before we knew how to define it. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. You guys have, and I think that's a the testimony of that is seeing Ansley Lakes y'all subdivision. I mean. You know, for a little while there, I mean, Church of the Grove was Ansley Lakes, and Ansley Lakes was Church of the Grove. I mean, that was pretty much synonymous. A lot of work to do. Yeah, um, but I mean, those were two things that were interconnected for sure. Um, and so, we set up and broke down youth middle school. Those stories and those moments were were so great, and the the creativity and just the sermon illustrations and uh, Craig and Amy's story being a part of that mm-hmm. early launch team and uh, being right there side by side with. You and Jill, um, I know, were were huge parts in in the early uh, phases. And Craig was always someone too that just thought so out of the box. Yeah, I mean, some Craig, of those sermon illustrations he thought of, I was just like, who comes up with things like yeah. that? Yeah, Craig's one of the smartest guys. Oh yeah, that, that you you would ever meet. And yeah. so you take his his intelligence and I think his heart for God, his heart for people, um, and his heart for the Word. And he would he would just put everything he had into just one sermon, uh, you know, on a Sunday. And the the fruit of that was uh, is the fact that we still talk about some of those yeah. things he built. I mm-hmm. mean, Craig was MacGyver, the mm-hmm. church planner. He was. I mean, he you give him a paper clip and a piece of PVC, uh-huh. and he could build anything, yeah. which was great because he built signs, he built uh, stage props. I mean, he did all kinds of stuff. And so, Craig was was so important uh and and you know he his legacy is in ministry in general but especially at church of the grove is something that that oh, is, lives on for sure yeah. yeah absolutely and so from youth middle school um i mean some of those stories that you know you shared about couples coming off the street one of the other things that as you were mentioning that that i remembered that i'd kind of forgotten about was you know we were at youth middle school and then right next door to us was the orchard you remember yes. and so we were church of the grove and the orchard was right next door to us and remember how uh, it was like every, every Sunday week, there was somebody that in. was like, "We're looking for uh, uh, Ben Kathy, right? Wasn't yeah. that his name? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think and, so. and so he was the pastor that started yeah. uh, that church, and they were a church plant as well. And so every week somebody would show up, and we're like, "Oh, that's next door." And they well, would, and they had the same story. Yeah, it was just People back and forth. There. Yeah. And so two tree churches right next, right next door to each other, right next door to each other. And so uh, we had to get out of there just because of that reason. Um, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but we were there at youth middle school for how long? For 2006 to January of 2010, and so we, I we may right at the maybe even when as the church started, we were aware of a new school that was going to open up on the, in the West Walton area, and um, I, they may have already had the property. I'm trying to remember the sequence and the time frame, but but pretty quick after the church had already been planted, we were aware there's going to be a new high school. We knew where it was. It was going to be in Walnut Grove, and so we. Uh, we we wanted to be in Walnut Grove, I and mean, that's one of the reasons the, the name, church is yeah. named Church at the Grove. Um, I always say that you know uh, uh, the the other thing that applies to that is is a church is like a grove. It's it's a group of trees that produces either fruit or nuts, and, and the churches church produce both. Yeah, and so uh, and so anyway, so we uh, I went I I actually it was a God thing. My mom had been a retired employee for the Henry County School Board. She actually knew and had worked for the new principal at oh, Walnut Grove High School, Mr. Boutwell. And so I, I called him and made an appointment to go meet with him, and I shared with him about the church. And I said, Can, would you consider letting us come and meet in your auditorium uh, once, once the school is open? And so mm-hmm. they opened in the fall of 2009. We gave them a semester to adjust and get used to the new building and, and – get established, and then we started in January 2010 meeting in the high school. And that was a great, great facility. That auditorium was yeah. beautiful. Um, and really before that, which we can't really leave this part of the story out, um, we went through one of the worst financial oh, yeah. uh, recessions. I mean, our country has known, at least in recent history. Um, and uh, it was, it turns out, not a great time to plant a church in the middle of a financial downturn. Yeah. And uh, a lot of the people that were on our launch team and stuff were in the construction world and the housing market bust and all of that stuff. And so um, there were definitely some 
very difficult times financially for Church at the Grove, especially in those early days, right? Yes, it was. And, I, you know, there's a couple of different perspectives. If we had, if we had planted the church prob- possibly earlier, you know, and had a building with a, with a mortgage, I mean, there's a lot of things to consider. Um, it might have even been more difficult. And so God's sovereignty and providential will was at work. And so um, it, it was just the grace of God that all of the timing worked out, that we didn't have debt. We were able yeah. to cut expenses, our, you know, and, and God provided miraculously through all that. Yeah. And one of my favorite stories is Sandy uh, would say, we have the bills, but we don't have the yeah. <laughs> money to pay them. And God would send the check just in time. It would literally come just in time before it was due. So it was neat to watch her. Yeah, she was our... us that, and then they'd cry together, and he'd come home and tell me. And the other thing uh, that a lot of people don't know is Russ had the opportunity when we were down financially to sub at LCA. Mm-hmm. So he subbed over there for a, a year mm-hmm. to, um, to help with the income. Yeah. And it also met a need for them for a man who was out having surgery and having problems. So God, God supplied. He yeah. always provided. Great stories. Yeah. yeah. Um, I remember those days with Sandy Terrell being our secretary mm-hmm. at the time. And I mean, just those times when yeah. she would open the bills and the Lord would provide. Story after story. Miracles. Yeah, for sure. Um, so uh, Walnut Grove High School, uh, we met there portable for eight years. Yeah, a long time. Uh, Too long. Let's see, 2010 right. to 2016. Okay. So, so six years. Mm-hmm. Um, and in the process of meeting there, we launched Social Circle, which was in 2012. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that was two years into Walnut Grove High School. We took 30 people or so and launched down in Social Circle, which was always kind of on the radar since yeah, the we, uh, very beginning. Well, first of all, we wanted to be a church planting church. We wanted to be a, a church that was always involved in, in, in helping plant new churches, yeah. whether that's down the road or across the country or across the world. And so before we ever had our first service um, at Youth Middle, uh, God put social circle in our heart. We just saw that as a town close by in a growing community that would need a fresh gospel expression. Yeah. And I like to tell this part. Um, when we, when you guys went down to social circle and those 30 people went with you, we were so excited that they were so excited about doing it again. And the g- wonderful problem we had was they were serving so much in Walnut Grove, we had to scramble. Yeah to recruit other people <laughs> because the the planning team that went down they were like whoa we need some help up here they left a hole right yeah, yeah. so it, it was a it was a good problem to experience and to realize they're so excited about doing this again but we we need to keep recruit i think it was a hello we, we mm-hmm. kind of got a little comfortable and stopped recruiting for a while and you you can never stop yeah yeah who yeah looking back man that was <laughs> we we learned a lot of we yeah, learned a lot that was of lessons. Crazy. Yes, but, but we should that, not do. I, but I think that the Lord honors the fact that we you know what we're gonna we're, we're just gonna move forward. Yeah. and be obedient. And it and and if we look back, sometimes we might would have changed the timing, but I don't think we would have you know seen anything any differently. Sure. Yeah. And so uh, started Church of the Grove in Social Circle in 2012. Continued meeting at Walnut Grove High School, and then we. Uh, a piece of land came available uh, here mm-hmm. in Walnut Grove off the parkway. And the parkway was really something that was talked about at the very beginning um, when we first started the church. Mayor Don Cannon, who's now a part of our church here, and um, he had this vision that we were going to have this parkway in Walnut Grove. Walnut Grove never really had a city center, and he wanted to kind of create that. And uh, I remember you and Craig having conversations about, you know, how great it would be if we could, you know, have yeah. a place here off the parkway. And so when land came available, um, we were able to jump on that. And that was, uh, the years all run together to me. But that was what? Well, I know that we, we moved into this building May of 2016. Okay. So if you backtrack a couple of years, we, got we, the land. we, you know, bought the land and we were raising money so we could build the building. So we sat on the land for a while uh, while we continue to raise money and of course we had plans for uh, a different building and we had some really wise leadership uh jeff baker and ken fraker and and some other leaders you know were wise enough to say you know what let's 
why don't we build a, a different building that we know we, we can, you know, th that'll be a little bit more financially feasible uh, as a first step. And I think that was wise. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, and it's allowed us to maintain a lot of freedom in, yeah. in continuing to do ministry mm -hmm. uh, instead of having a, a, a big debt load. Yeah, so. for sure. And uh, and then we've been here, you know, since 2016 yeah. in this facility. And uh, Social Circle's moved around a few times um, since then. And, uh, you know, now behind the Blue Willow uh, for the past, I guess, three years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a great place <clears throat> down there for us. Um, well, and I think part of that, you know, I know you're you're kind of interviewing us a, a little bit, mm -hmm. but part of it is part of the story is 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 planning social circle and having that vision. Which, in in order for us to to plan it, we needed a, a planter and a pastor, which yeah. was you mm -hmm. and and Caitlin before y'all had your kids. Uh, not only were you willing to go down there to plant the campus, uh, but it was a big step when y'all decided we need to go live in the community. Yeah, and so I. I that's something that I, I that really stood out to me, mm -hmm. and it was was really pivotal in the life of our church for y'all to sell your house, uh, you know where uh, where you lived up here more in the Loganville area and yeah. move and move to Social Circle. Yeah, well, and you guys definitely. Um, I mean, you know, uh, uh, we're a great example of just you know going back to the you're talking about missionaries. Um, and living in the community and, you know, trying to figure out who the community is and mm -hmm. then becoming a part of it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we had a great launch team. I mean, these were, you know, fantastic people. I mean, you can't talk about Church of the Grove without talking about, you know, some of those names like the Calhouns and yeah. some of those kind of guys. Um, but they just didn't live in, they didn't live in Social Circle, right. you know. Mm -hmm. So we had like, I think, four people out of our launch team that actually lived in the city of Social Circle. And so we said, if we're going to reach the community, like we got to live in the community. Right. And so we felt really burdened to, to do that. And so we, you know, we moved down there and, you know, I think the Lord's been gracious to, to use us in a small way to, right. to be able to reach some people down there. Um, and I think that's cool. I mean, just Jill, just hearing your heart too, talking about like, I thought I was going to be a missionary, you know, foreign somewhere around the world and the Lord had other plans and, you know, I wasn't able to go there, but yet, I mean, you very much are, you and Russ both, I mean, are missionaries right where mm -hmm. the Lord has placed you in Walton County, Georgia, Ansley Lake subdivision. You know, you wouldn't necessarily have planned that or written that as your story, um, but the Lord has still been faithful to mm -hmm. to call you in that direction. And, right. well, and, I, and I pray that we, we teach, not only... We, that we teach it by living so that other people get it. Yeah. Because that was one thing when you guys moved. Uh, you know, a lot of times at home, our conversations, I'm like, they get it. Yeah. They get it. They're, they're, they're on the team, it's, and they, they have the vision. Like we talked about the launch team, relaunching Social yeah. Circle, you know, or I should say a, a new launch. Mm -hmm. So we're very thankful that that people are, they get the vision that Russ is not, you, nor you, the professional. Yeah. We're all... We're all commissioned to go out and serve Christ. Yeah, right. And I think if yeah, I mean, I think looking back over the history of Church of the Grove, I mean, I think that that would be the one thing that maybe, you know, jumps out to me at least is mm -hmm. that you know God uses ordinary, common mm -hmm. people to do you know extraordinary things. And when you think about you know the launch team, I mean, they were incredible people, definitely that were on the launch team. But there wasn't, I mean you know, supernaturally gifted people. I mean, like you know, I mean, I look at me and Caitlin, like. I mean, we were, I think, tw I think it was 26 or 27, I think, mm -hmm. when we started Church of the Grove down in Social Circle. Like, mm -hmm. we had no business doing what we were doing down there. I don't know why you guys well, entrusted us to do that. You know what I'm saying? But, but like, you know what, 26 or 41, if you love the Lord and yes. you go for it, you want to serve Him, He's going to bless and He's going to honor that, whether it's you know, as pastors or if you work at the factory or the yeah. um, the school or the any, I mean, just name every job any Grover has. Yeah. Well, and that's, and that's what, yeah, and that's what I'm going after is just, I mean, I think for people listening or watching today, like, I mean, no matter where they're at, I mean, there's, a, there's an opportunity for them to live out their calling and their mission wherever they're at, whether that be mm -hmm. in their neighborhood, their school, their workplace, um, their family, wherever that is, they have an opportunity to, to do the ministry that they've been called to do um, right where they're at mm -hmm. today. And I think that everybody has a responsibility, but also an opportunity. Right. And the Lord's gifted all right. of us in just 
unique ways and yeah. we've all been gifted in that way so absolutely cool well um we're gonna we're gonna cut this short net here uh just kind of talking about the history um, but then we're going to come back next week and we're going to talk about uh, just kind of some of the lessons learned. So we kind of walk through some of the kind of just the, the history moments and just kind of breaking down some of that. But next week is where it's really going to get interesting. because I want to talk about some of the things that y'all learned and kind of, like I said, go behind the scenes a little bit more and talk about just uh, the church plan in general and how it impacted you guys, y'all's marriage, y'all's family, and some of that kind of stuff, if you guys are so inclined to to go for that. Are you giving us a choice? I'm not giving you a choice. <laughs> y- y'all are on the couch. You're, you're stuck. It's going to happen. So okay. um, so we'll be back next week uh, with that. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, we would love for you to like and share this. If you're watching on YouTube, we'd love for you to subscribe. Uh, and if there's anything that we can do for you guys, we'd love for you to reach out to us. We love you, and we'll see you back next week.